right now, everybody, our guest, uh, I, I, I kind of, and here, let's, uh, we're going to bring ASG. Why don't you come back on ASG? Um, our guest, uh, he really needs no introduction because no one really cares, to be honest. Um, uh, that No one likes those little rat dogs, like, uh, you know, like little, little, uh, like handheld dogs. My friends have one. Every time I go over there, it like yaps at my heels and I'm like, Brandon, get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the dog's name is Jack. Uh, but no one likes those little dogs anyway. But, uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of heels, he tries hard to be one. Uh, Brandon, baby heel Hannah, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, how are you, Brandon? Hi, I'm doing great. You know, uh, happy to be on your show. Happy to be the biggest guest that you've had yet so far. This is really exciting for you. I can't imagine how happy you are. I know you're my biggest fan. You talk about me all the time. And I'm just really happy to do this for you. Abby Friel was a bigger guest on this show than you, but right on. Um, uh, Free to disagree. Uh, Sabrina has never been on the show, but she, I, I would assume, is in the same uh, building as you right now. She would be the biggest guest this show has ever had over you. I can't so, argue uh, with that one. You got uh, me there. I, I, I'm glad you was Smart I, guy. Smart guy. <laughs> I've been I've been asking you to be on a couple different shows for about a year now, and you always shoot me down. You got better stuff to do. Uh, I, I'm glad that you that you finally got a time in doing nothing um, uh, to stop by here. But I, I just want to say um, I have nothing against you at all, other than the first time I saw you, uh, I, I just thought you were Ben Bateman's little brother tagging along to the matches. Um, it took me a really long time to realize that you were going to play. Um, and that, you know, you can answer some questions, right? So, uh, good job on that, I guess. Um, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying not to go in too heavy on you. This is really hard. I'm, I'm divided here, Brandon. Uh, I'm divided because I, I want to be professional and I love this show. I love this sport. Um, and, and you are a good competitor. I mean, I can't deny that you are a very good competitor. But uh, I'm just having a hard time not picking on you. So let me actually pass it on to our uh, our uh, fill in uh, fill in or, uh, co host here, guest co host Chris. Uh, why don't you get us going? Because I'm afraid I'm about to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> See, no, nah, no, nah, I, I I got you, Jay. So first of all, Brandon, it's a pleasure to meet you, brother. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of your stuff. Um, definitely a fan. Uh, but I'm, I have to ask you first, um, like your your approach on the game. Like and how and how you look at it. Like how Jay mentioned, we first were introduced to you as um were you I don't want to say bag boy, um case carrier. Is is that better? We'll we'll say that. Um but you, I used you to were, have a business agreement with Ben Bateman, you know, long yeah, time you, ago yeah. in Galaxy Far, Far Away. Yeah, and and oh like and we, yeah, we were aware and I, I forget I forget how that ended, but it ended. Uh but I mean you're definitely making a name for yourself. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how so how do you approach um, like just from how you entered the league and how you've been looking at everything from the inside, because you're obviously there or you were there in mm -hmm. studio when there was one, and it, now we're doing the whole digital thing. How do you? How did you approach it then, compared to if you can tell us how you approach the game now digitally? Yeah, that's an interesting question. It's it is a little bit different. Um, in the studio, I kind of had a very particular routine, and there's also there's like I don't want to say if there's like games to be played, but you know, it's like if you get to the studio a little early, sometimes you're waiting around, you're pacing, you're getting nervous, you're working yourself up. But if you show up just before your match, sometimes you can feel like maybe that can give you a little bit of an edge because you're kind of in your own space prepping for the match all the way up until that point. And then, you know, you could have your competitor wondering like, where is this guy? Is he going to show up? Uh, those mind games do not work. I still got TKO'd, but you know, it was worth a shot. But anyways, working from home, playing digitally, it is a bit of a different situation. For starters, I can play in my underwear now, which is really great. Um, but also I'm allowed to, it gives me the opportunity to prep literally all the way up until the match starts. And I think I've always been really good. I don't know if you guys, you know, you guys are sports fans. Have you seen the movie For Love of the Game where Kevin Costner kind of has that clear the mechanism thing that he does where he drowns out the audience uh, and the crowd and the, everyone else on the field except for him and the catcher? I kind of feel like I'm pretty good at that as well. But 
being able to play from home, you can kind of, it makes it a lot easier to do that because it's really like, all right, like I have like little squares here. I see Mark Ellis here. I see Christian Harloff here. I see Saul over here. I'm not even looking at him, but you know, it makes it a lot easier to kind of be in your own headspace. So it, it is different. Uh, I've noticed I'm a little more, a little more myself has allowed me, I think a little easier to kind of discover who I am as a competitor in the league. And I mean, especially for your, your time with inner geekdom and inner geekdom, obviously that's your bread and butter. Like we've seen you um, tackle other divisions, but I, I, I'm pretty sure um, the flag you carry is with inner geekdom. And with this past match against Eric Zipper, like you got your two guys who haven't necessarily reached the top yet, but have a ton of potential going there. And I think y'all's match, like in both cases, proved that. So we were talking about it earlier. I have to ask, um, why did you give him DC? <laughs> that is a fair question. That is a fair question. It's not as crazy as it looks. I know the guy loves to wear Superman t-shirts. I know he was on a team called World's Finest. I know he's best friends with Winston Marshall, who literally hosts the Inner Geekdom show. I'm aware of all these things. But mm -hmm. let's just say, without giving too much away, we we looked into the statistics, the analytics of everything, especially um, with Felix now of, of, of shmoney ball fame. If you've seen his promo, that's all legit. Felix knows his stuff. He's a numbers guy. I'm a numbers guy. We get along really well. And looking at the numbers, DC actually really stood out as a category that Zipper had not performed as well in in the past yeah. as he could have. And when you compare that to the the new categories are kind of a wild card i don't know how much zipper knows about jurassic park i don't know how much zipper knows about graphic novels but i do have some quantifiable data of how he's performed in dc in hindsight they, that was obviously a bad decision we realized looking back that there were elements that were not being considered when it came to why the numbers were that the way that they are so it was it was a lesson learned it was some uh, the, we learned a lot as a faction on how to approach the wheel round from that match alone not just me personally but as a faction we learned a lot and i think thankfully it didn't come back to bite me in the butt but we did we did honestly we had a good reason we had reason to believe that he would not perform as well in that category as he would in others and it was to me it was a, it was a big risk to give him a new category because i just don't know what his skill set is in that with the, that's something about these new categories where it's just such an unknown it's it's a risk any any slice you give him is a risk in round two when your opponent spins opponent's choice but at least this was a risk where it was a calculated risk where we had data to back it up so ultimately was not the right call and that's a lesson learned about also you know when to go with a more conventional thinking in round two and went to like kind of just go with like common sense gut feelings versus going with the the analytics and that's what like major league baseball teams do all the time now you can't just rely too heavily on the old school way of baseball thinking compared to the new school money ball approach where everyone's analyzing wins above replacement and ops plus and all this stuff it's like that can only get you so far there has to be a blend of that like you know tribal schmodown knowledge that you've had from the beginning from watching from day one when they were in after buzz to also looking at these numbers so it was a mistake but we we thought it was a smart idea at the time and going off of your comment that's why i beat jay over jay over there <laughs> uh because i picked them a lot that he picked alex to win so uh i i and i am a numbers guy too uh <laughs> so uh so my question is is um we've seen you with, work with other well, work with other managers in the, the last year <laughs> But uh, you seem like from your last match that you're more willing to work with Roxy. So what sets Roxy apart from those other people you work with? Sure. Well, um, for starters, I don't think Robert Meyer Burnett needs any explanation as to why <laughs> I was unable to work with him. Um, that, that guy is just so loud. But anyways, <laughs> you know, Ken Napsok, what a hack, honestly. <laughs> oh, my God. This. 
he was not the right guy. I can't believe he I, he got more votes than me to be the new manager of the Burning Droogs. I can't believe it. I would have taken that to the top, the whole faction to the top. Warfather, he'd have a belt over his shoulder right now with his horns and his schmo hammer and all that stuff. We'd be sitting pretty right now. But <laughs> but I, I digress. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me on track, Jay. Um, but Roxy... Roxy, she um, she gets me. She understands my value, and I'm going to continue to talk over this because I'm the better man. Uh, I She understands my value. She drafted me first round for a reason, and she knows what it takes to win, and she listens to me. There is collaboration, not just amongst her and myself, but with the entire faction. We talk to one another, and do I normally get my way? Yes, from time to time, I do. But... You know, we all have something to offer, but most importantly, they appreciate, Roxy appreciates what I have to offer. And I think that creates a mutual respect, which goes a long way when it comes to having a match against Eric Zipper when you're down by six points in the third round and you need the grit and the perseverance to somehow tie that damn match and win in sudden death. I don't know if I would have been able to do that a year ago or the year before, um, but... There's something going on this year uh, that's just a little bit of magic in my corner. So uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this one, but as an electrical engineer, I got to ask, uh, you got you, you got Mara, you got Chandru. What is it with engineers and IG? <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about it. I think we just, we love trivia. Uh, we're all geeks in addition to being nerds. And I don't know. I don't know what it is exactly. There's definitely there's definitely a correlation uh, for sure. Okay. Um, so uh, so uh, going back to your most recent match, uh, did something uh, click in your head uh, to give you a new focus or, you know, because you definitely did a whole lot better in sudden death than you did in round one. So was it a focus thing or just the questions were better for you? You know, I, I, take us through, uh, I guess, that. Yeah, sure. So I was definitely, I was, I was struggling a bit. It was not my best day. It was obviously, up until the end, it was the worst game that I had ever played by far. And it was no indication of what my skill set is, what my knowledge base is in the Schmodown. But everyone has a bad day. Luckily, I was able to push through, like you said. Um, it was just, it was kind of a matter of, I think, you know, people give Roxy a lot of credit. And where there's credits due, where they all kind of like have been saying like, oh my God, like you should be a motivational speaker. Like she does do a great job in between rounds of keeping my head on straight, keeping me in the game. But also just as important is, I don't know if you noticed, but for the first time ever in these digital matches, I was talking a lot more. I was talking out loud to her, but also to myself. I feel like she served as a springboard for me to kind of just vocalize where I'm at and where I want to be and say that out loud and have her be able to listen and reflect it back onto me. And I think that was able to help me keep a better headspace. And it was just a matter of, I, I mean, I freaking missed my two pointer. And at that point, I thought the match was over. I didn't realize mathematically I was still alive. I was like, why isn't I was like, why isn't he saying like Andrew Winter, or Eric Zipper? Like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, like I'm still in this. Uh, and then for my three pointer, luckily, um, you know, MCU directors basically was the category, something um, I know every MCU director composer release here, like the back of my hand, that's something I've studied intensively. So that was fortunate. And then for my five pointer, I got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which for a lot of people quite scary. And I know there's some things that people are saying about the difficulty of the question, but the truth is, I've been studying those movies um, a lot. I've been spending a lot of time with Sabrina studying those movies. I would not have been watching as many of those movies as I were if she wasn't kind of like pushing me like on the couch, like after a long days of work, like, come on, like put on an inner geekdom movie. Like you gotta like, you know, push forward. I'm like, ah, you're right. Let's, let's, do, let's do Ninja Turtles. That's like a, a small category. I can knock out all those movies. And I watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows like two days before the match. 
So <laughs> they could have asked me anything about that movie and I would have gotten it. So that's why I answered it as quickly as I did. I'm not one of these competitors where I'm going to like draw it out and like burn all of my JTEs like up until the very end just to build suspense. Like, no, if I know it, I'm going to say it. And so I just spit it out. And at that point, it was a whole new game. I would say I was still not 100%, like three or four questions into Sudden Death. Um, to give you a little more insight, that first Planet of the Apes question, uh, I studied Planet of the Apes for hours just for that one question. And I kind of had to do a little bit of math on my whiteboard to decipher what year Conquest of the Planet of the Apes came out. And then luckily I made good use of my one JTE on that Punisher question because it was not coming to me in that initial 15 seconds. Oh, wow. but, that, but then once I got past that point, honestly, like I started having fun because it was just like, like me and Zipper, I think we just both kind of like had this like feeling. We're like, all right, this is never going to end. Let's just keep answering questions. Like this is fun at this point. All the stress kind of melted away. And then fortunately uh, got a Middle Earth question. And that was what was able to seal the deal. Yeah, that that was a really really great match uh, for real. I, I do I do pick on you a lot, but um, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, I have wanted you on shows for a, a little over a year now. Um, I do absolutely love your character work. Uh, you are a very good competitor. Um, uh, so uh, on that note, though, my mom actually just texted me a minute ago. She wanted to know when you play in your underwear, is it boxers or briefs? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually boxer briefs. I like a little bit half and half, you know, like somewhere in the middle. Okay. Well, well, then I have a follow up to that um, because that <laughs> that really was not my question. My mom actually <laughs> texted that in. Um, uh, have you ever played in boxers? And if so, <laughs> does the looseness, not going to get graphic, but does the looseness help or, or hinder at all? I would assume that, that, the, that you, that the, the briefs would actually be better if that's what you prefer to wear during matches. I would say it doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. Just underwear is underwear. You know what I mean? Well, it makes a difference when you're, when you're working and, and walking a lot and running and, it makes a difference sometimes, but yeah, thanks mom for submitting that question. Um, uh, for real though, we, we did have, uh, there is a feud, well, maybe not a feud, but there's a little rivalry with you and Saul. Um, and we had Saul on last week and, uh, I asked him if he had any words for you. Uh, I'm just going to play a short, uh, about a 20 second clip or so from that. And, uh, like to get your, your response on the other end. I'm going to start helping Grandin study. Maybe that's how we do this. Maybe I fly out there. And I get into his uh, his little studio apartment that he has there, and I just sit on his couch and I just start firing questions at him. He probably won't let me in the premises though, so maybe I just start writing like Star Trek questions and taping them the rocks and just throwing them through his. <laughs> I need this schmuck to win. Uh, obviously, that was before you won, uh, and you did win. So, uh, but uh, have anything to say to that, or anything else for that matter? Yeah, I mean, Saul. He's a guy that loves to talk, especially someone who's already lost to me. And people always are like, whoa, he was a different player back then. He's studied a lot since then. There's new categories now. Look at the way he knocked out John Humphrey. Like, please, like, give me a break. Like, anyone could have knocked out John. You could have knocked out John Humphrey. I mean, that guy just, he just doesn't have it. You know, some people have it. Some people don't. I'll give credit Saul. He's got it. Whatever it is, he's got it. But it's not enough to beat me. I've already proved that it's not enough to beat me. And if he works his way back up to a position where he can meet me in the rankings, I'll prove it again. So he can continue to talk all he wants. I'll continue to win. I got to worry about Robert Parker. Not that I'm worried at all. Robert Parker. I know he, he has nightmares about me. I hear I'm friends with people in the dungeon. I know Kaiser. We get coffee from time to time. You see, he isn't, he gets nightmares. He gets nightmares. Can you believe that? Like poor guy, but I got to do what I got to do. If I got to crush his dreams, I got to crush his dreams, but I'm here to win. Well, uh, uh, you did that uh, again. You did that against Zipper. That was a really, really good match. Um, and you and as you just mentioned, you got another one coming up here soon against Parker. Going to be looking forward to watching that one as well. Um, uh, if you could do one thing, uh, not right now, of course, but I mean, we're about to let you go here and move on to our next segment. But um, if you could pass something on to Sabrina for me, let her know that my dream team, my Schmodown dream team is she and Roka. Uh, 
in all black and kicking ass and taking names. That I have been I have been wanting that team since uh since she cut her first promo after she signed in free agency last season. Dude, Roca and Sabrina, I want that team. I don't care who the manager is. I'll I'll pass that along. I think there's no way in hell she makes her way back to the Finstock exchange, but if Froka wants to head over to the Mercs. It might be something there. That could be very interesting. Very interesting. Um, thank you very much, Brandon, for your time. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, you are welcome back absolutely anytime. And uh, and good luck on your upcoming match uh, against um, against uh, uh, Parker. Parker. And uh, I, I do also want to say, um, as far as your character work, I, I like that you're giving Roxy a good shot this season. I really like it. Uh, it it's a nice little change. I don't think it's going to last. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, but but yeah, good luck to you, Rob or Robert. Th- good luck to you, Brandon. Oh, ooh. don't get hey. our names mixed up because one of us is going to be in a body bag in a few weeks. Okay, I'm going to be oh, sitting pretty oh. up top on my way to a title shot. All right. Okay. And and you know what? I do appreciate being on your show today. I was planning on giving you guys a really hard time. You do your little baby heel bit. It's a lot of fun. But you know what? I was I, I thought I'd be a little genuine today. You guys asked me some good questions. I thought I'd give you some good answers. Jay, you do a pretty good job hosting the show. Honestly, I think you have a really great voice for radio. I don't know what you're doing here talking about the schmodown on a show that nobody really watches, but Hey, like you are great. You're and 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 everyone else here. We got Anthony Double D A S G. I really know you guys. You guys ask great great questions. So it was it was honestly a lot of fun to be here today. Thank right. you very much. That does Thanks, mean sir. Sir. thank you, um, uh, Brandon Hanna. Everyone, uh, Brandon the Hitman Hanna. Thank you very much, sir, and good luck to you. Hear something funny the mic wasn't on that whole time no way yeah for real oh wow <laughs> <laughs> so smooth